don't do that. Boom, 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 Better get your paper, 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 paper. Dying to get me sound and my nick and y'all. Better get your paper, paper, paper. Are we recording? We are. All right, perfect. All right, welcome back to the second part of episode 16. Or the more I say it, the more I think it's actually episode 17. But I'm not. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. Anyway, it's the second part of the episode. Fact checkers, get on it. Yeah, let us know. Or, God forbid, we look at our phones or anything. Uh, we're going to dedicate the second portion of tonight's show to uh, doing our Bone Thugs and Harmony impressions. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know if you guys heard me doing the, the Carol of the Bones, which is one of my favorites, but it goes like, Bone, ba ba bone bone ba ba bone bone ba ba bone bone ba ba bone Right. I, and I did a paper paper, so it's time to get me sound and my ninja sound. I get that paper 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 paper. I don't I don't think I remember the rest of the lyrics. That's, That's all I you guess. need, just paper paper paper. Is that and then, uh, what else? Uh, is that Crazy Bone doing the paper 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 paper? I don't know who's who's the high pitched one. That's busy. And then which is the fat one? That's crazy. Okay. Uh, what else is there? you doing? Flow motion. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> who's that? Cut him with a tongue like a double-edged sword. And I I love that song. I hated that album, but that song, oof. What is your favorite Bone Thugs and Harmony song? I think it was Crossroads. Was it? Okay. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Body Rot and uh, First of the Month. Uh, yeah, that, that was like a big one, right? <laughs> that I Probably. It should be. <clears throat> it was fucking fantastic. And they were like, yeah, we got our welfare checks. Yeah. We, we live in Cleveland. Like, hey, everyone. Um. So, anyway, also, while we were on our little break, we discussed the potential for karaoke at Phil's wedding. Yep. We had a 90s harmonica guitar jam session. Yep. And it it was great. What what would you, if I did karaoke, what would you want to sing? 100% sure. Like, like putting that environment, it's Phil's wedding. Phil's wedding. So, obviously, you can do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> And um, and no no like what what would you want to do karaoke like if you had to trim it down to like ten, I don't know, probably uh, songs or some Paradise by the Dashboard Light. How does that by me love? Um, I thought you were gonna say Paradise City. <laughs> no no I don't know that I don't know the words to that song. I think I Red Rich is always on ice cream. You gotta ain't working but around it. No Paradise by the Dashboard Light is like um, I don't know. Do you know? The Bad Out of Hell album? Do you know any Meatloaf? No. Oh, dude. So good. It's, um... Well, I'll have to write that down. Yeah, sure. write it down. I'll just do that album. Like, fuck it. Like, there's, there's <laughs> no, my no, answer. Okay. I know, from start to finish, I that was actually, um... And during the break, we were also talking about... I'm just about, busting balls. I don't want people to leave. No, you're being mean. <laughs> um, so, one of the, the first dates... Yeah. Or the first times I ever went out with Megan Lindsay, she was just over at my apartment in Springfield, Illinois, and I, believe it or not, was pretty inebriated, and I put on Bad Out of Hell, and I just serenaded her through the entire album, and then we went out for like <laughs> two and a half years, surprisingly. That was... Uh, you gotta start doing that more. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, you single? <laughs> Wait, I, I thought we were gonna go like smoke and go to a show. No, I'm singing the Meatloaf yep, album. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Lock the door, throw away the key. He made me listen to Meatloaf without his consent, yeah. and it was his voice. <laughs> Bad out of hell is 14 minutes long, <laughs> and he doesn't even know all the words. So, so that's, okay, so that's like what, that would be number one, and then what other nine? So, let's see. all right, so let's see, so. Uh, Bone Thugs? Well, Bad out of hell is track number one, so that's song number one. Yeah, yeah I'm saying then, like as far as groups, what do you think you'd want to oh sing? Oh man, I don't, see it's difficult because I don't know. All right, let's throw in some CCR. Okay. Some some credence. Oh, that'd be great. Uh, let's throw in some grateful. I think Dead. I think CCR is my favorite classic rock band. Really? That's, I'm not kidding. That's that I remember that every fucking summer growing up, and I like I don't even think I knew how to speak English when I sing along to Credence. That's they, how they have so many good songs. <clears throat> yeah. And go on and ride the wind. Every fucking I yeah, I, yeah. It's so good. So CCR, um, me low. CCR, Grateful Dead, because I know you're a big fan. The Beatles, because I know you're a big fan. Um, maybe uh, some Rob Zombie. Do a, do a little <laughs> if you want. Do a little Living Dead Girl. <laughs> sure, yeah. yeah, dude. Only if uh, you strip like a Living Dead Girl. Oh yeah. Oh, you know, I have to I have to wear my naughty 
tuxedo that he's singing to me. Yeah, dude, just like that, but worse. Um, so I don't know what is that. That's four or five artists. Yeah. Uh, no Bone Thugs. Maybe. No, dude, I can't keep up with Busy Bone. Okay. He's he's in. He lives his life in flow motion, and I just yeah. can't can't keep up with that. STP. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's throw them in De- there. Definitely. See, but the thing is, like, I'm naming all these bands, but I don't think I know all of the words to a single one of their songs. Like, I know. Oh yeah. Like approximately all the <laughs> words. But well, like, that's what a karaoke is about, making an ass right. yourself. Well, and that's so like Stone, Stone Temple Pilots, like I would just like kind of sound it out like, and I feel so much to pay on where <laughs> yeah. we go into the bathroom. That, I, I, I think that's the perfect impression right there. All right, then let's throw in uh, Alice in Chains, some Rush. Okay. And uh, let's end things off with uh, Kiss from a Rose. I seal. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. What are your karaoke picks? My karaoke pi- yeah. uh That's hard to say. Oh, I, my God. I, I just rattled off like 10 artists. You can't think of one. Fuck. Come on. So, Did so I steal just, all of yours? So just, no. No. So just right off the bat? Yeah. Uh, hmm. I think I'd have to do some George Michael. Oh, dude. Yeah. What song? Uh, Freedom. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, and then... Trying to think. Definitely some STP. Oh, yeah. I'd have to do some. We d- could do a duet. Yeah, man. We could do uh, Trip It on a Hole, and I could be like could, the, that one voice has like this. And you could be like, <laughs> we could do Temple of the Dog, Hunger Strike. Oh. <laughs> I'm going hungry. <laughs> <laughs> that, oh, man. I'm going hungry. You got to do the, the, the fake ass. You know, limp wrist shit that Eddie Vedder does. <laughs> I'm so strung out. Yeah. <laughs> was he in Temple of the Dog? Yeah, I, it was I him did. and uh, Chris Cornell. Oh, really? Yeah. That's wild. <clears throat> I'm going Yeah, the hungry. one who's scream. Yeah. That's Cornell? Uh, well, they both sing that, I don't mind. That, yeah, Chris Chris Cornell's like, I don't mind stealing bread. Like, it's more yeah. like a normal fucking voice. I yeah. hate Eddie Vedder. Why? <laughs> He's bread. You know, he's he's it's it's like he's on a vibrating platform when he <laughs> sings. It's he's pushing out that being strung out. That's why he's a phony. Yeah, he's a phony, and we hate phonies. <clears throat> yeah, we're like Holden Caulfield. Right. We hate phonies. <laughs> do you get? Did you ever read Catcher in the Rye? Yeah, yeah, dude. Holden fucking hated phonies, and so do we. Is that why I hate the Beatles? What you think they're phony? Because isn't that what caused them to shot John, ju- shoot John Lennon? Oh, I think so. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, um, Mark David Chen. Yeah, you. Yeah. No, anyway. but, um, uh, well, so watch out, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Paul's body double. Right. Um, so, yeah, so we had a lot of fun in so, the break. So, so STP, yeah. George Michael. Yeah. Did I say anything else? I, I could probably do a whole Three Six Mafia or Oh, Bone yeah. Bucks. I could oh, do yeah. it. Um, I would definitely want to do just to get shit really awkward. Some death grips. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, just to get everyone like warmed up. Like, right. yeah, it's a wedding. You, you We're having fun. You know, you can't even fucking dance to that right. music. Really, you know, <laughs> just to make everyone really uncomfortable. Yeah, it, it, it'd be like that uh, weird fucking band on Chicago Go where the kids like didn't know how to fucking <laughs> dance. You know, <laughs> um, I don't know if I'd do any. I I'd love to do like some. Uh, crazy fast punk like iron reagan or power trip okay or um maybe uh let me think what else i could do credence so that's what like five or six yeah uh what about some pink floyd i don't think it, i i wouldn't want to do pink floyd okay I'm trying to think of like maybe some gogo Bordello. what about uh that would rip shit up t-rex yeah, I could do. No, I, I don't know his lyrics well enough to do. I, I don't know STP lyrics at all. I I could sing maybe Soundgarden. No, so um, it's gonna be a ninety. Uh, oh yeah, so yeah speaking <laughs> of the soul. speaking of nineties, yeah, I I I'll do some TLC. Yeah. You know? Don't go chasing waterfalls. Perfect. I should we go grab Kelly? She, she's gonna be so excited. Right. And like, nope, we're not. We don't have a television or yep. a screen for the words. We're just gonna do our best, and everyone's gonna love it. Yeah, it'll be a uh, day to remember for sure. We'll be a bunch of posos, so that's for sure. Yeah. So you were saying 
so your ceremony is going to be at the Baha'i Temple. Yeah. In Evanston or Skokie yeah, yeah. or Wilmet, wherever it is. Yeah. And they don't allow amplifiers on the grass. So, so the, here's what sucks: the temple. For for anybody who doesn't know it, Evanston is. Let me let me give a great description for our audience. Evanston is a well. It's in, technically in Wilmette, but it's like the same area. Sure, dude. Evanston and Wilmette is like the second yuppiest fucking place in Illinois. Down to like com- competing with Highland Park, where like you know, right? Billy Corgan and Michael Jordan live. Yeah, Evanston and Wilmette are the yuppiest fucking places. It's all mansions that are like four, f- no, three stories high, and they're as wide as they are tall. And it's fucking like like every every everybody that walks their dog there, the dog's like the most perfectly groomed fucking you know like English dog uh, like they they look like they came out of a fucking catalog instead of out of you know. <laughs> and anyways, uh, oh, it's a Labrador cockatoo. Yeah, I think I think that's where Home Alone was filmed. Really? Yeah, that's pretty cool. sure. So that type of fucking huge house, <laughs> except there's like two people living in the Home Alone house, not fucking the whole family. Right. Isn't Bill Murray from there too, I think? I don't know. I'm pretty sure. You're asking a lot of really good questions, Phil. So uh, anyways, so th- it's, it's a really, uh, you know how you know it's yuppie? Because all the fucking street there, I'm not kidding, is paved in bricks. All mm. of it. But, um, and then. uh, is, Now, is it yuppie or is it just like <laughs> dilapidated, like, you know? Uh, unrenovated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they haven't. Ch- they haven't fucking updated anything since the 1800s. Right. May right. I have some more porridge. Right, with your horse and buggy. That Evanston porridge. Right. Only. Only. No, but, uh, but uh, so they and they have this temple that apparently um, I, I've been there before and it's really nice. It looks. It's just really culty as fuck. How it's so? Culty as fuck. It's just. It reminds me of. Maybe I play too many video games and watch too many culty movies, but that it, it's just very uh, sort of like it gives you this feeling where you guys are saying the exact same fucking thing as this religion. You're just sort of a little bit too more hyped about it, you know, to spread it. And then how they they, they were saying, like I asked her, I'm like, I just want to, to be honest, I just want a cheap fucking wedding. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm I don't to care g- about you or your God. I just, See, how much? Let's that, tuck that, turkey. That, 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 yeah, dude, serious. So I was telling her, I'm like, you know, uh, I was trying to kiss her ass. I'm like, oh, is, this is the best temple I've seen in Illinois. Oh, it's the only one in the U.S. I'm like, yeah, I was just testing you, you know. like, And um, Wait, there's only one Baha'i temple in the United States? Yeah, and it's in Wilmette. Weird. She was saying there's one on each continent, so there's like eight total in the fucking world. So it's not that popular of a religion, or yeah. that's their thing. I I would assume that it's not popular, but somehow the fucking Will Met one looks like some shit out of. It looks like that uh, temple that it, it looks like that building that Sauron is spinning in a circle, or that makes Gandalf <laughs> spin in a circle on uh, the the two towers. Yeah. It's 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 incredibly intricate and tall. The only thing is, it's kind of cone shaped, so it looks like it could be Islamic, but it's pointy at the top. Or a chocolate factory, like in Willy Wonka. Yeah. And uh, is there one in Antarctica? You said there is one on every continent. I maybe made out of ice. You know. Okay, yeah, yeah. Eighty feet beneath. It's like some alien versus predator shit. Well, they have Evanston money, so I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, yeah. So. Anyways, and then they have, so the, what's really weird is that their main symbol is, it looks like the a black magic, white magic sorcerer's star. That's their main symbol. But all, all along the building, they have every type of, so, okay, so for anybody who doesn't know Baha'i, apparently the this is the way I interpreted it because all fucking re- dumbass religion is based on interpretation, but the way they said it is all these messengers are worshiping and giving this to the benefit of one God. So they're kind of like his bitch messengers, and mm-hmm. the, meaning... And this is how they explain it. You're like, ah, they're yeah, all yeah. It's just God's yeah, bitches. Yeah, he's got all these hoes and they're doing work for him. Mm-hmm. He's the main man, though. You can't. Oh, you, yeah. you, you can't even talk to him. Mm-hmm. You can just, you know, smell his glove. He's the bottom but, bitch. And so he, uh, 
There, yeah, so there's they're they're saying how like in different periods of time, all these different messengers came, like Krishna, Buddha, Zoroaster, Abraham, Muhammad, Jesus, and um, these are all Jim the, Jones. <clears throat> yeah, Jim Jones, right? Um, the dude. Yeah. So Jeff Bridges, and That's right. uh, so they're yeah, th- um, they just believe that they all are the same messenger from the same God, and when you go in the temple. Like, you can't do anything there but meditate. You literally cannot do anything. There's no bathroom. There's no trash. You are. You can only go in there. And that's the most beautiful part. And then you can have the ceremony outside in the gardens. And, like, another thing that is culty, it kind of reminds me of, like... Uh, but there are no bathrooms there? There's bathrooms outside or, or in the, uh, like, I don't know what you'd call it, like the headquarters or the lobby. Okay. But in the actual... T- but those are in a different building. So there's there's literally the temple is strictly for meditation. Hmm. And there really isn't any ceremonies, so it's just kind of like this is just a room filled with chairs and you have to be quiet, you know. So uh, uh so you're so, doing it. You're sounds going like to- a polite British jail. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but and uh so, so yeah, yeah, I'm I'm doing it. Um I'm going to do it. yeah, but even like the the outside like everything is, per- I'm guessing it's because it's that yuppie fucking town. But everything's perfectly planted. The grass is perfect. It reminded me of like in the movie Get Out, how they have like the kind of like the the the, the people who up keep the entire property, kind of the slaves who sort of the the guy with the there's a guy with an axe and he mm. just sort of, you have to make everything look fucking pristine like it's in some ad. And that's like she was telling me that like you can't have any chairs on the grass, which I kind of like because I think folding chairs on the grass just reminds me of like some fucking redneck wrestling. You know? Sure. But uh, yeah, so it's nice. Um, so did she tell you like what to expect? Like what did the ceremonies do? Like- There's a whole checklist about how you have to do everything towards the Baha'i religion. And you have to like one of the things is you have to at the end say I am... I take this, you know, woman as my wife according to the will of Baha'i God or some shit. And if you don't do that, then you can't get married. But I'm going to do a whole lot of coughing. (laughs) (laughs) What what do you mean? Yeah, I'm doing this in the will of (coughs) Satan. (coughs) Satan. (coughs) Well, perfect. They're going to love Jeff Bridges. (laughs) I hope they don't listen to this. Yeah. Call them their God and his prophets bitches. And anyway. It's gonna so, be fun. Yeah. So uh So they're cool with you getting married there, even neither you nor Kelly belong to the faith. Like they just Oh, they said like ninety percent of the people who go there don't even fucking believe like belong to the faith. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. And and she was saying how she like doesn't like that people are very modest about it, meaning, meaning like they just they they have absolutely no intention of joining there. They're just like, This place is beautiful, let's do it here. Right. Which is what the fuck else do you expect? <laughs> you know? <laughs> You're the only temple of this yeah. religion for fucking thousands of miles. I mean, I, I mean, how the fuck? Like, what kind of if if it if it's culty, that's a failed fucking cult right. <laughs> because you got this incredibly rich, enticing, beautiful, almost shimmering and glowing, you know, expensive, intricately put together building. In the you know, it, it looks like something out of Lord of the Rings. Why is this here? I am interested. Oh, it's just a combination of all the religions. You just mash them all together and throw so them out. Is that their yeah. logic? It's like, well, if you look at it, like every church and every synagogue and every mosque and every temple is technically Baha'i because we, like, yeah, yeah. just like piggybacking on everyone else. Yeah, That's, yeah, uh, good for them. Yeah, it's That's, so. Was there anyone else there when you went there? Were there people meditating? There was like three people in there, and I think they were also <laughs> scheduling weddings. So nobody, yeah. I, I really don't think there's any followers, to be honest. She got mad because um, she was explaining. To, there, there's an indoor place where you can have the ceremony, mm-hmm. and it looks ridiculous. It looks. What do you mean? Um, so you can have an indoor. Usually, they have it indoors if it's like you know winter yeah. or raining, and the indoor place just really looks like a place where old people play bingo. <laughs> it, 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 like a multi-purpose room at the Y. Yeah, yeah, no joke. It, it, they have a bunch of folding chairs set up. Then there's like a you know backdrop of curtains that it it, it it literally looks like the room that's in the intro of Seinfeld, you know. And 
And I, so actually, when I think about it, if they if they let you choose the music, I should definitely do the intro of Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> Just on repeat. Well, it's with jokes these days. You know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That, oh, they'll love. That's probably just her job, just having people spit in the face of what she no, believes in. No, just. she she looked cultified. She looked like she did that Scientology test with the zaps to the brain. What was her What was her title? Was she like I I don't I don't remember. Did she refer to herself I, as like mother or like Earth sister? <laughs> no. Uh, but she got mad at me because she was explaining to Kelly how they do the things indoors and they had an entire buffet open for the followers and I just kind of went to go and get some goodies. Yeah, what was what was the spread? What kind of food did they have? They had like everything uh that's how you know it's fucking yuppie because they had like everything catered by Starbucks over there. Like really good fucking cookies and brownies and huh. like all their coffee. So, yeah. I mean, you could get cheap fucking brownies and other shit. All right, so why would you get all this Starbucks shit, you know? Yeah. So. All right, so next time I'm hungry, just head over to the Baha'i yeah, yeah. Temple. Oh, I'm part of the faith. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What the fuck is going on upstairs? It sounds like know. Kelly's wrestling someone. Anyways. Maybe. Uh, She's just excited. To what, uh, Yeah, for the karaoke. Right? Yeah, for yeah for the karaoke at the wedding. She's going to listen to this podcast, and she's going to be like, oh, yeah, CCR is great. Can't wait. Can't wait for Bill's uh, rendition of uh, what was it? Ride the Wind. Yeah. Come yeah. On. yeah. But, uh, so I was, yeah, I, I have these topics written down. Yeah. Dude, uh, have you ever heard of fucking, so I've been listening to a history podcast. Yeah. Have you ever heard of the USS Indianapolis? No. Is that a boat? Yeah. All right. Dude, I, did I mention this on the podcast no, before? No. I, guarantee, I, don't, I don't think we've ever talked about boats. Okay. Have you ever seen Jaws? Yes. Do you remember when they are, um, so you know how like, the the guy who's the the guy who owns the, so there's Brody the the cat the the sheriff right mm-hmm. and then there's um there's like the nerdy yuppie um yeah the shark. R- Richard Dreyfus yeah, <laughs> yeah no y- you know he's like the scientist and mm-hmm. then there's like the the badass fucking sea captain right mm-hmm. I forgot what his name is he's I I, I think he's Irish Wait, I fucking love that actor you know what I'm talking about nope continue well they're they're out on sea and they got all the traps set out mm-hmm. and they're like shooting the shit and getting drunk and finally like getting along with each other and the captain that they, they they start talking about like some scary shark stories and he starts talking about his experience with the USS Indianapolis and okay. you, you know what that was nope dude and once again for our fact checkers I may not get this right but I okay I love gory fucked up insane mind fucking things i love them whether uh-huh. it's whether it's gory whether it's some crazy pedophile fucking killer or some satanic cult shit i love it all <laughs> sure and dude when i heard this story well it's part of the baha'i faith yeah yeah exactly yeah. in the will of god <coughs> amen no but but dude when i heard this story it was uh dan carlin who does hardcore history he's fucking great you can't get a lot of his shit because you have to pay for his he's so good you have to pay for his podcast mm. now We'll get there someday. There's a few clips like that U.S. Indianapolis one, and w- w- the way he tells it, or or just the the order, dude, it's fucking devastating. It is so devastating. What? What? what, what? It, so what happened is it was, and once again, this is based on my retaining of information, sure. which isn't very well. Well, I think our listeners know that we're we are in a an approximate news source. We exactly. We we know some things about things that may there, have happened. There's fake news and then there's hear nothing, see nothing, say nothing. Right, yeah. which is like a step below. It's yeah. like our retelling of fake news. I was going to say the the highest news. No, oh, anyway. Well, well, you know. No. Anyway, the USS Indianapolis. So USS Indianapolis, yeah. Uh it was a it was a ship that was the size of I believe a football field. Okay. And like an ha- aircraft carrier. Uh, no, no, it was like a navy ship. Okay, and they were um they were uh it was around 1945, I believe. It was around where World War Two had already ended. Uh, I think World War Two was still going on. 1945. I think so. I, I I'm pretty I sure know. it was nearing an end. Where okay, sure. And, and and what happened is uh they were delivering this ship was f- like 
I don't remember the exact. It was like a. Maybe, maybe I think it was like we'll, we'll say. Uh, two thousand, you know, uh, sailors on this boat, right? Okay. And they're and they're on this boat, and so it's nearing the end of the war. But they want to make sure. The Allies, the U.S. wants to make sure that nothing sh- goes fucking crazy with the Soviets sure. because they're kind of fighting, you know, fighting off the Nazis and Japanese. And so what they're doing is they're delivering an, a second atomic bomb secretly that okay. that nobody fucking knows about. Okay. And they're going into the board, like around Japanese lines. Okay. They get picked up on... So there's so there's two thousand uh, sailors. Yeah, they get picked up on radar by Japanese uh, boats. Uh oh, and they start shooting uh, missiles at them. What happens is the Japanese start. Yeah. Okay. And they get the and the thing is they can't really call for any help because it's sort of like it's a secret fucking mission. Right. So in, in a ship like the size of a football field, the two thousand dudes are trying to be like sneaky. Yeah. Well. Well. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, and you're 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 not supposed to call for help because it could if you call, you don't know if it's going to be intercepted. U.S. Or that helps. It could be a different ally that they're like, oh wait a minute, why are you doing this secret shit? Right. So hey, is that an atomic bomb? Yeah. And not only that, like e- e- all the allies, they know where. All the ships are stationed, and everything. Mm-hmm. So you're not. Ex- they're gonna be like, "Why the fuck are you here?" Right. So, th- so they're just like this unknown fucking entity. Yeah. That if something happens, they're fucked. Right. So they get shot by these missiles. Yep. Something happened. The boat. The boat starts sinking, and some. Uh, I think it like either they they just left the Japanese. Just kind of I don't know what exactly, but I think they just kind of left them alone because they're just like you know. All right. They we we shot the ship down. They're dead. Job well done. So this ship starts sinking, and they shot him right in the middle of the boat, and it starts sinking. Now every all these fucking sa- this was a all this all, the ship sinking. It took ten fucking minutes. So they have these two thousand sailors, and every single wh- like whichever way it's going down into the water, they are trying to run up to where there's air right while they're running where there's air they have to wall off the rest they have to wa- when when you like kind of like in jaws when you have a hole in your boat mm. you have to start putting sh- you literally because this is like old times this isn't like good technology where like right. there might be a welder or something you have to just start putting like cabinets and beds and shit against the hole so this ship is sinking and while it's sinking you like like these these sailors are fucking sleeping you wake yeah. up and there's a fire from the missile, and at the same time there's water seeping in, oh, shit. and you have to act quick. So now you got fucking friends that haven't woken up, that haven't come, and you're walling them off. You're like, you're gonna yeah. fucking die because we have to sh- save the rest of the fucking ship. Yeah. So your friends are are, trapped. are screaming in there. Yeah. And then because there's a fire, as you're trying to go up, all the fucking beams and everything you grab onto is orange hot. So you're burning yourself while you're trying to run up. You get what I'm saying? Like everything that's above air from the fire is fucking orange hot. So you're burning yourself while running up. You're you're walling off your friends that are not only drowning, but also there's people who are on fire and you're trying to wall off the fire. So you're hearing people screaming what you want, what they want you to tell their family after they burn alive. Okay. And they're they're running up this fucking ship. And as they're running up, everybody starts jumping. And they said something like, for every fucking, like, hundred people, there was maybe one life preserver. And even, oh, the, and, shit. And, and even the people who had life preservers, here's what happens. It starts sinking, sinking, sinking. Everybody jumps in the water. It forms a vacuum. And sucks them down, too? Yeah, it starts sucking. So even if you had a life pre- uh, preserver, like, so say out of 2,000, there was, you know, what, 200 people who had a life preserver? It would suck you down 100 feet down, and some people had their eyeballs popped out of their head. Uh. Then you go to the, to the, sh- to the like, then they go back up to, um, you know, above water, and they're chill. And, like, here's the thing. Have you ever been, like, out to sea, like, out, out on a boat or something? Not really, no. I've been, I have, like, swimmed, and you're not supposed to when it's night. Yeah. Because... People forget, like, when you're in a lake, you can sort of see a little bit of, like, brown because you can see the ground yeah. through the water. When you're in the fucking ocean, there's pitch nothing. black in every direction. 
you, you can't see the person in front of you. It's it's so fucking bad. So these people are drowning. And now, oh, and not only that, as this fire is bursting open pipes and and people are sinking down, there's oil that is on fire. So when they get to the shore to get breath, they're lighting their eyes on fire oh. from the oil burning. Jesus. So not so like and you're seeing all this shit happen within ten minutes. Like all your friends are fucking getting tortured. The the way I like after I watched, I'm like, this is theistic Satanist hell. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this is there's no worse torture than that. so all these so here's what happened. All these people they get Please to, tell me there's a happy ending. Dude. No, it get, it it, oh. it it just gets worse and worse. So so out of the two thousand, I think they said like nine hundred got saved. Here's what happens though. They get up to air and now they're, you know, they're floating and, and they're trying to sort of find out like who who's alive or trying to survive because they don't have food. Yeah. They're not on radar. And then daylight comes. Now it gets even worse. Because now they've been sleeping and they're hungry, but now they're trying to gather up everybody who's alive. Some are unconscious because of like, you know, pressure mm-hmm. from getting dragged down into the vacuum. There's people that they go up to and they th- and they're holding the on to them because they think that maybe they're just unconscious mm-hmm. and they find out guess what they are in the area where in that area in the daytime is the strongest tiger shark feeding. Oh no! So there's there's just a shitload of fucking people, literally just getting the, half their torso ripped off and somebody swimming on their friend who is like dead. They think they're alive but they don't see. Oh, there's missing legs. Mm. You know, and 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 they stayed there for like, they were literally there. I think for it was somewhere around, if I round up, ten days. Jesus. And yeah, it was fucking. And 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 the worst part was is that the few people who survived, you know, all of this, as you know, I'm I'm sure you know, just basic military rules. This shit, like the way things happened, was sort of arranged by the captain. Sure. And the fucking captain, every fucking year for around 15 years, he would get Christmas cards saying, it's your fucking fault that my son was tortured alive because of the one fucking decision you made. And after like 15 years, he killed himself because Oof. because of all the like blame he get, cards he get. Wait, isn't he supposed to go down with the ship? Did he make it out? Yeah, he made it out. Uh, he, was, he was instructing like what you're supposed to do. I just, I don't know. I had to mention that because I... I, I I I never heard of more cra- crazy like that's a fucking movie right there you know that's but but you can't really prolong <laughs> ten minutes into two hours you know I think you very easily can yeah I mean they made what three Hobbit movies out of oh one yeah. book, you know <laughs> yeah yeah you can figure it out I don't know I I thought that was nuts have you, have you have you heard of any like more devastating story than that like as far as pain you know you're dealing with your friends uh, burning alive next to you and then. Uh, I don't know, man. I feel like nine eleven was pretty bad. Yeah, just for yeah. like death count, and I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know yeah, if I yeah. know like more suffering. Than well, that. I'm I, sure well, there has. Yeah, been. yeah. I'm, I'm. Well, I mean, the whole time I'm thinking about like how bad burns feel. Sure. And how how like w- when you see those flies when you're like losing breath underwater, mm-hmm. and then like how how much of a fucking headache you get. Oh, yeah, that was the other thing. Like, around, like, day three, because of hunger and because of stress, they started killing each other <laughs> be- because they were hallucinating that they're Japanese. Oh, they're, no. So it's it's just, yeah, they, I mean, there isn't one person who didn't come out of that without, like, a mental illness. Jesus. Much. So, yeah, it was, no, I, I haven't heard any. So, so that's what I'm thinking about is... How, when I like was listening to that, I'm thinking about when was the time where I had the worst anxiety, the worst fucking burns, the worst like, you know, I mean I haven't had anybody close as friends like die or get tortured in front of me. Sure, but I mean that would be horrible. You yeah, know? and then that'd be pretty and, bad. And then just multiply it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> mul- yeah. Just multiplying all yeah. of that together. So I don't know. So let's not join the military. Yeah, let's, yeah, yeah. let's stick to to podcasting and I, welding. I, I, I had to listen to it because in Jaws, when he says it, it's like that one awkward moment where where everybody just gets silent and they're like hearing because the whole movie the the captain the the Irish guy mm. 
he's kind of looked upon as like this fucking drunk who thinks he's hot shit. Sure. And then he starts talking about this and they're just like, wow, this, this guy really is like a crazy fucking badass yeah. who went through this, you know? So I was, I was like, what bad for going through what? And then I looked it up. I'm like, wow. You know? Yeah. Er, Did you, fair enough. that, uh, Dan, Car- the hardcore history. Mm-hmm. The one thing I wanted to is get, is listen to the great cons one. Cause everybody keeps fucking talking about it. What is it? Uh, b- uh the history of the great cons. Khan's like Genghis Khan. Oh, sure. And I didn't even know that, like one weird fact about it that did you know that he like changed the human f- uh footprint as far as race because of how many fucking people he was responsible for killing? Oh yeah. And I, d- for, I didn't know that. like like how many women like he raped? Like No, I the, didn't. The like Genghis Khan, yeah, dude, like his blood is like all over. <laughs> uh he was uh pretty uh pretty l- influential. Yeah, I'd say for lack of a better word. So yeah, history is fun. Yeah. Um, sometimes. Yeah. Um, the other podcasts, uh, or I was talking for a while. I don't, I don't know if you had some. Nah, dude, it's all good. I was. Uh, I told you about true crime. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> we shouldn't shit talk other podcasts. <laughs> but no, no I, I, I was okay. So let me tell this story. I, I don't even fucking care. This is my opinion. There, I don't think they're that huge. All right, let's hear it. I was trying to find, uh, out of nowhere, I mean, I was watching a series on Netflix called, they, they have uh, six episodes on each decade now, like there's the 90s, then the mm-hmm. 80s, and the 70s, and, and it's really, really funny, like one episode will be all commercials, then the other one will be all politics, and like they have nine, where like 90s, they have an episode where it's all about like east side, west side hip hop. Okay. Uh, do they talk about Collective Soul? They don't talk about Collective Soul. Fuck it. But uh, yeah, I was uh, they they were talking about the Menendez brothers. Okay, and I, I, I never like give a, I I never paid attention to the news when I was a kid. Like mm-hmm. I don't, I didn't know that Scott Peterson and Drew Peterson, which isn't even nineties, were like two different people. Mm-hmm. I thought it was like the same guy, like getting away with a lot of shit. So I'm I I try to look up the Menendez brothers, and I find this what uh podcast called True Crime. Which overall, as a podcast, is very informative. They've okay. got great information. I love the way they talk about it. But they could they could do without the Gibby Gibbons, <laughs> dude. <laughs> holy fuck! Oh my god! Right. So Gibby is so, Gibby is one of the people on the show. Yeah, yeah. I, I okay. forgot what the, I forgot the the main guy's name. I don't even know because he talks the whole time, and that's good. But he he sounds like somebody from he's got like a I would say almost like a Chicago accent okay. and he and he's he just sounds like one of the guys who's very well educated mm-hmm. and then Gibby is just like this awkward fuck who sounds like he never got laid and who kind of just says like two words kind of like say nothing you know no 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 but no he he. I I, I can't. Ex- they try and make humor into it with him, and it's just I I don't know what ex- example to give. Like when they're talking about the Menendez. So there was yeah. So here's this guy. There's Eric Menendez, and then there's Lyle, and they decide they're gonna make this pact. They decide they're gonna bite the hand that feeds. And what do you think, Gibby? Do you ever do that? You you, you don't bite the hand that feeds. You don't bite it. It uh. It's it's you you buy white hand you you might start buying the other and it's not good to have no hands, people know that. Yeah, yeah, right, right. So then they start moving on and and you know, uh, they 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 figure why not go to a gun shop? You know, hey Gibby, l- like you know, how else are you gonna kill them? They you gotta get a gun. He's like, yeah, r- r- right to bear arms, uh, uh, Harry, like a bear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's so fucking bad. You know, it ah, oh, it's it it throws you off track because you're trying to listen to the story and it's just constantly. Yeah, I I, I, I would I would say that he he, he that they, they they were a little uh maybe they were looking for their marbles because because you you know they 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 lost them. It's, uh, it's I, just before you continue, I'm letting you yeah. know that right now you're like ruining any chance we ever have of doing like a. a collaboration yeah, with true crime no i hope no, you're okay dude, with that true crime is a great fucking podcast but gibby like you gotta go man i'm sorry it's it's so <laughs> fucking like okay <laughs> do we need to edit this out yeah it's on you 
It's uh, on you. I this mean, is your fault I, if we don't edit it out. That no, it's not on me. I don't no. know. I, let's let's. I'm just, just busting balls. Sure, yeah. you're being mean, and Gibby is a good friend of mine. Okay, I like Gibby. I got used to him. Maybe it takes <laughs> a few listens, but he's pretty fucking awkward. Like, can we re-record this when you're just raving about how great Gibby and other? Yeah, guys yeah, are? yeah, yeah. And so this awesome comic yeah. guy is. I guess he stumbles well, and stammers let me put it, and. <laughs> no, no, I would. Okay. No, come yeah. On. No. We're never mind. I was going to compare it to somebody else. But sure. No. Come on. It's like no. you don't. No, no. True crime is a great. Uh, and uh, actually, I was going to say there's a fucking crazy fact which might make you might might give you an even better idea of what kind of person I was from where I grew up. Tell me. Do you remember me telling you about who the Chicago Rippers are? The Chicago Rippers. Yes. Yeah, Chicago Ripper Crew. Uh, were those the skinheads? No, 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 no. It or sounds like it, though. Or no, no. The um, Chicago Ripper crew. That was the part of the satanic panic in the night. Okay. With the guy. Oh, oh, I'll retell it for oh, our listeners. Sure, the CPC. Yeah. Or CRC. God, I yes. can't even spell. Is it, isn't CRC like a department in in a school or something? Probably. the. It was them. Career Resource Center, maybe? Yeah, yeah. But the Chicago Chicago Ripper. Rippers. Okay, so here's the story. I'll try to break it down. Long story short. Long story short. Or just if you say uh, like one sentence, I'll probably be like, "Oh yeah." Yeah. Well, okay. Well, I'll I'll re-explain it for the listeners. Forest fires? I, no, no, no. They were um. So there was a construction company in Melrose Park. The reason why I found out about Chicago Rippers is because of that whole satanic panic. Where I grew up in my neighborhood, everybody said, "Don't go in the woods because they're satanists. Don't mm-hmm. do this because they're satanists. Don't oh fucking go around there." And right. I used to. I was like, where do you fucking join? That was me as right. a kid. And just wa- wandering out into the woods. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, hello, Rippers. Ripper. Satanists? I'm not oh. looking for the AIDS ass virus. No. I'm looking for an application. So, no, anyways, so these guys, the reason why I found it out is because I, I watched an episode on Netflix called The Cult Crimes, and they mentioned a hotel called The Burr Rabbit. Okay. And when I saw that, I was like, holy fuck. That is a mile from where west of my house, mm-hmm. where I grew up in Chicago, and it's still there. They didn't change the sign. They didn't change anything. That was where the first murder happened. So these were four guys. Here's the thing: there's Robert Gecht, who is pretty much a complete fucking sociopath, and is just for some reason he's completely into tits. That's like his breasts. Fetish. Yeah, like- he fucking loves tits. Okay, that's his biggest preference. He would rather titty fuck you and marry you for it. I mean, Anyways. to each his own. So, um, and then there were three of his workers in the construction company. Two of them were actual, in- like, actually interested in Satanism. So they kind of just were like, "I just want to start raping and murdering women sure. for our, our, you know, for fun." Father down below, you know. Sure. And he was kind of like, just, all right, we'll do, we'll use that as the motivation, you know. As as far as as far as like an insanity plea, you know, when he just really just wanted to rape the fuck out of women, when these guys were more like, I want to do. Sin-. I mean, it doesn't make it better, sure, but it was more like these guys. He controlled these three other fucking people. Okay. He was like, if you don't come along, you're already this deep, so you got to keep going. So, what they they would do is, for some reason, they would take a piano wire clip off the left breast of every woman keep the tit and then fuck them in the wounds and then every okay. and, and every tit they kept they kept in the attic of robert Getz's house okay and circle jerk around it when oh, there's just nobody to murder tonight it's friday night <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly and and w- w- um they didn't they didn't find the, the every fucking story i've heard about the chicago rippers they're like we don't know why what's the significance of the left tit what's the left tit i think it's a left-handed path i think that's what it has to do with what is the left-handed path yeah for black and white magic you do evil is from the left hand and good is from the right well you gotta think so so like so like you have the wicca star on the right and then you have the pentagram on the left similar Mm. to that maybe what does gibby think well, you know, you don't buy the hand of fates. I like how his 
like justification was you're in too deep you're in too deep you have to come circle jerk with me in my attic <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah yeah okay so, boss <laughs> well, well well they were using their work van and um so they so th- th- it ended up being around 18 confirmed victims they thought there was more and oh the reason why i brought it up before on the podcast and this mm-hmm. is so bad but so they yeah they would do that they jag off to the flesh, and then and then they they fucking bury the body somewhere. And because they were part of construction, you know, obviously, if you fucking are into murder at all or watch Sopranos, you fucking that's that's the easiest place to get rid of a fucking body sure. is cement it down, you know. Mm-hmm. So they um, a few of the victims got away, mm. and the like it just made me laugh my ass off because oh God. The, the how the, be, because the. The occult crime special on Netflix. Mm-hmm. They show this woman uh, in the hospital when the co- the cops are questioning her and she's like breaking down crying, mm. and it looked like they put a basketball under her shirt on, on only one side, so it's just one huge tit. Oh. <laughs> but it's such a fake tit. Yeah. yeah. So it just I it was just a really bad, you know, made for TV reenact. Yeah. So I love those like dramatizations. Or yeah, yeah. Dramatizations. Usually they're good, but just thinking, yeah, because her, ori- I mean, you need a whole a lot of piano wire if her tit is the size of a fucking basketball. Sure, you know. So she like they did mutilate her, but then she was like, "I'm out of no, here." She got away, and and uh and they let her go. And well, the first mutilation was at that hotel, which mm-hmm. was like a mile f- fucking west of my house. Sure. Anyways, they ended up catching these guys. And you know they found out all this occult shit. Uh, the w- and the weirdest fucking part was that that Robert guy who led this whole crew. Mm-hmm. To this day, he says he's innocent. Hmm. He he's a so he had such sociopathic power over the, the other three that they had him. They had them confess that they did everything. That Robert was the leader, and then they'd be like, really. We're glad you gave us this information. And then they bring Robert in the room and their fucking like pupils widened. And they're mm. just like, no, never mind. We did this all. Like mm-hmm. that's how quick. And so he was actually up for parole like two years ago. Okay. I don't remember. I didn't read into what happened, but here's the part that I couldn't fucking thanks to true crime. Mm-hmm. So here's a shout out to true crime. Way to I'm go, Gibby. I'm sorry, Gibby. I'm sorry, Gibby. I love you. Okay. I'll be honest. It makes me laugh. Perfect. But that I was, was very looking, nice. That was yeah, lovely. Really. Really, but uh, yeah. Of course, like I didn't know this. So they, that group of people. You know what construction company they work for? Mm. They worked for the construction company, owned by John Wayne Gacy. Interesting. Isn't that fucking nuts? That's fun. Small world. Yeah, and and what's crazy about that too is that even when John Wayne Gacy was you know, interrogated and fucking, like, questioned, like, throughout the whole process. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to be put away. So, so... (laughs) He did did a lousy job of that. Yeah, well, well, no, but... So, you know, when you get a fucking lawyer and you're completely caught, Mm -hmm. you're going to go... You're going to get as desperate as can fucking be, you know? Mm -hmm. You'll let the lawyer give you ass AIDS virus. Mm -hmm. So, so he... His new story was that he had accomplices help him because Uh you know they found around 30 bodies Mm -hmm. Uh, and they there were so many they couldn't fucking count them because there were so many uh body parts Mm -hmm. and so his like new alibi was well how the fuck could i do this all by myself how could i do this there's no i had accomplices there were accomplices in this and yeah i don't know i just i thought that Mm. was i thought that was interesting that they because i think he a lot of the people who were on that construction so what i what i read from courtesy to true crime was that or heard from uh that construction company his motive well the way the motive looked was i'm gonna hire a shitload of young boys Mm -hmm. because they're all looking for jobs straight out of high school they want to pay off student loans so you can pay them cheaper to do more work Mm -hmm. but yeah you get young boys not really like student loans but you know, yeah, they're all yeah. looking to make a buck. Yeah, yeah, and and and, and <laughs> you know, y- yeah, exactly. But so so they so but but you we both know what we both know what happens when you get young boys around John Gacy. Mm-hmm. And and you know what's fucking even more sick though t- that that I didn't even realize 
the way certain words evolve. For example, how we were talking about racists, you know? Mm-hmm. Like to me, I, I'm still old school. So to me, you're not a Nazi unless you're actively killing other races. To me, a Nazi is 1942 Nazi. This day, I mean, you could be a fucking Nazi for liking a certain cartoon or a certain joke. What I thought about the terminology and linguistics aspect of this story, every time they tell the John Wayne Gacy story that's fucking crazy, which they brought up on True Crime, Mm -hmm. they say these were young men. The crazy thing is, back then, when you were fucking 18, you were sort of like expected to be married and off on your own and living on your own and have your own job. Mm -hmm. So when they say young men, a a young man back then, you got your job when you were 14. Okay. So that would be a man at 14. So, so they, he was like fucking some young, like, like boys. Sure. And because they even said that back then pedophile wasn't even, that word didn't even exist back then. I don't know. I thought that was kind of I think it totally existed back then. I, d- I don't think it was made Pedophile? Yet. Yeah. That, come on. Pedophilia has been around. Well, it, well, it wasn't used as much. I mean, it'd be like, like you know, when, I, I mean, I've heard about this even in like when I heard about, uh, you know, I, I we talked about like the whole Me Too movement about how there, I know recently, obviously I've been reading a lot of articles about the whole Vatican covering up all these fucking child molesting priests that... Back in the day, you got some weird fucking priest that was just, oh, he's he just gets naughty with the boys. Right. Instead of, now you be like, no, this fucking creep fucks you in the ass. You get real blunt with it. And that's, I, I think that's what I mean. The, they they just, a lot of those people, they just didn't use that terminology. Well, sure. And then, like, even in ancient Greek times. Yeah. I forget it was. Well, I mean, well, yeah, I mean, but if you said, like, I mean. Maybe it's shitting on like our, like the new generation about how we're still fucking boys in our minds, you know, you like, you know, now. So saying this guy fucked young men now would be some maybe somebody into their thirties because they're, they're they're still not fully men, you know, <laughs> mentally. Uh, you know. Yeah. I don't know. I'd I mean, I I've always gone by the whole age restriction thing, you know. As what far like as, eighteen and up is men? Yeah. Yeah. 17 and younger is boy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I bet there's a rule. Yeah. Or maybe they just prefer to say young men. You know what I thought was kind of crazy? Tell and me. And I will fucking call this out. I don't give a fuck. All right. I think it's crazy. And and, and that's the other thing, that John Wayne Gacy lived one, two blocks north of me. Okay. And he actually lived 10 feet away from where I lived in that condo. Okay. That's where his house was. Yeah. Well, it's not there anymore, but- no, it, uh, well, yeah, it got demol. The mm-hmm. property got demolished, and they changed the address, but mm-hmm. that like location is yeah. still there. The, I think it, they changed it. I think it was like eight eighty thirteen, West something, and it was now like it's Buttercup or something like Butterfield or some shit. Butterfield, I think so. Maybe. And then now it's like eighty twenty eight or something, hmm. but. Um, yeah. Good luck selling that house. What I find weird though, and maybe you and Sandra disagree with me. What do you find weird about the John Wayne Gacy? That growing up, that whole fucking story was terrifying. Yeah. One of the biggest aspects that people won't understand ever, because you have to live it, it's literally like living a different race, is that in a world where there wasn't GPS, where there wasn't internet, there's some fucking creep in this neighborhood. You don't know where he is. You just hear story. You You know what I mean? The aspect of like... They're like they explain how there wasn't background checks back then because sure. he was fucking and, and abducting boys when he lived in he was from Iowa, mm. so they don't know that how much he did there. Like they don't even know where that property is or if they discovered anything there. Sure. And so what I think is fucked up though is that like growing up, I'm like, this is the most fucked up shit I ever heard because he goes after young boys by being a clown. Did you ever hear about the handcuff trick? No. He he used well, it's it. a handcuff trick. He, he used it to every victim, and there were about forty guys who testified that they got away from him because of it mm-hmm. on that construction team. He would he would go, he'd be a really like flamboyant clown, clowny, just a really like goofy old man. He'd be like, "Hey, so you want to see one of my tricks? It's Pogo. Mm-hmm. Here, look at this. Put these cuffs on me. Check that they're real." And he do. And back then, you know, like the kid cuffs that we have now. Mm-hmm. People didn't weren't really aware that those existed back then. 
Okay. So those were used in every like magic show. Okay. So pe- everybody thought those were real cuffs. Okay. And he just had the clip, so he would go like, "Yeah, look, you put them on. Oh, I got them out." And and he'd be like, "How'd you do that?" And he's like, "See, look, there's this clicker here." Be like, "Now you try to get out." And he's like, "I can't get out. I can't get out." And I'm like, "Well, for those, you have to have the key." And then he'd fucking like knock him out and rape him. Mm. And there was one guy who, yeah, he got away. He he saw like uh, his name is like Jeff Gunzen or something. I don't know. Anyways, the thing that I think is crazy about all of this is that growing up, that was fucking terrifying. Sure. I feel like now because of the way social environment is, people could be like, it was because of his homosexual rage, so it's okay. If if he could just come out and 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 deal with, you know, being gay, he would it, it would everything would be okay. I feel like that. Could, I mean, I I don't see somebody like, you know, for example, Kevin Spacey being as persecuted as somebody like, I don't know, Harvey Weinstein or Bill Cosby. You know. What do you mean? Well, there well, there's a lot of well. Um, you know, you know Milo, right? No, but you've told me about Milo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, Milo Yiannopoulos, like, a, he's kind of an attention whore, douchebag. Sure. He can be. He has a lot of great points, and he's a lot of points that he has his head up his ass, AIDS virus ass. And uh, one of the things was that uh, he was trying to explain that pedophilia can be sometimes necessary for boys to understand their sexuality. Meaning that, um, you know, kind of like how, got how how like a straight male has like their first sex experience, and if it's and if it's with maybe an older girl, that's like amazing for them. Like that's a huge boost in confidence and ego, and they're the fucking ladies' man from there, right? You know what I mean? Sure. Well, he his argument was that for boys, they need a father figure who will, like, show them love by easing them into, you, you know, coming out and then fucking them. That was his argument. Okay. And it was really, really fucked up because, yeah, he's, like, super right-wing Republican and that, w- <laughs> like, it's just, I don't know. It was, I, I, after that, I stopped listening because I'm like, this guy, Sure. he's just trying to get people that riled up, you know. Sure. And it's, I mean, to be honest... I could see that being, I mean, uh, that that could be uh, the situation for a lot of maybe gay people, but where they wish their father had raped them. No, where the, where they had uh, wh- where like that's how they came out, and they were okay with it because they, their father raped not them. Fa- no, not father, a father figure, like an an older male who is gay. That's why I don't know if you've ever noticed. I mean, I have a f- I have a few gay friends who are completely picky about I will only date an older male because that that it's like a Freud thing where I need a father figure to what? be going out with. Well, I think that's everyone. Like, yeah, yeah, I feel like a lot of people have that sort of stipulation like yeah, oh, I can't yeah. go out with younger girls yeah. or yeah, or anything. I'm just saying that I I, I I don't know. All I was saying is I could feel with the extreme shit that happens these days that somehow t- j- somebody would make John Wayne Gacy like justified, you know? Sure. And I think there's probably some validity to it. Like all that anger yeah, yeah. inside, but that yeah. doesn't make it okay to oh, yeah, yeah, like absolutely. bury people yeah. in the crawl space. I just, I just thought it was crazy that, you know, you grew up with, around all those... Ro- I, but plus, that's the same, you, you know... I grew up around a lot of goofy fucking people with all the <laughs> satanic panic. And sure. Everything. I don't know. But that's, you know, not to talk shit, but that's kind of similar to how I felt when 9-11 happened. What do you mean? It was, I, I was always different where I grew up. I was always a fucking rebel. People were, oh, crazy, Phil. Like, I had very little feelings that were validated by people. They were like, oh, crazy, Phil. You shut up right now. Stop interrupting. You're fucking psycho, you know? And because there'd be things that would happen, like, I remember, you know what, the feeling that I had in 9-11, the only other time I had that feeling was when I played football in Catholic school. I remember playing. Wait, what feeling did you have? And, and I'll, I'll tell you, 
we we played and our school was maybe one of the top three in like our district or whatever i played because i was a fat fucking kid Mm -hmm. and 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 to this day i'm the type of kid where i'm telling you i cannot fucking watch sports i cannot if if i watch sports it's like kind of close to sometimes when i watch comedy i would rather be a part of the action instead of watching the action sure and so i i played football i was i guess you could say okay because of my size sure but i remember we lost a game and every motherfucker even like the hugest bullies i remember this one guy he one guy grew up to be a biker and he would he like i heard he like beats his wife and then another guy is a sociopath corrupt fucking cop like the biggest asshole bullies these kids were crying their eyes out over a fucking game it was such a stupid fucking bromance i was like really this is a fucking game man okay are you kidding me this is so fucking i've never like you guys are calling me a pussy and that you know that you know everybody would call me a faggot back then and i'm like i'm a little bitch because I don't know, I get my feelings hurt that like you may call me a Polak or something, but you're crying over a fucking football game, like so. so uh, as far as September 11, I'm gonna say like hazard you because you're oh like be careful. Although yeah like, yeah, but I'm, how but, did you but respond but to 9/11? Like oh you, oh, uh, you so, so you yeah, bitches so, are crying about a no 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 no. I am being careful. The the way I looked at 9/11, I mean. I got into music really quick, and I really, because I loved music so much, I wanted to read about what do these lyrics mean? What are they about? Who are these band members? Are they both? Are they fucking phonies? Is this about what? What is this about? And I listened to a lot of Rage Against the Machine, okay, and System of Down, which had a lot of influence on me. Sure, and you know, it it was a blind kind of, I guess you could call it like leftism, you know. But when September 11 happened. I was sort of like, why are you, why are you guys crying? Not that like I understand you're scared, but it's like, isn't it about time? After all the shit that we do, like, are, are you fucking serious? Are you surprised? This is the first of of all these years of shit that we have done. Mistake, you know, quote unquote. Oh, that was an accident, you know, that atomic bomb we did, or that was an accident, you know, sending our boys to Vietnam for no fucking reason. Like, all these fuck, and then. And, and then suddenly we get attacked once and people are like, we were not expecting this. What? Like, I, I don't know. Well, there have been attacks on American soil before. No, that was the first terror, like terrorist attack on American soil. I mean, that was the very first one. I, I would argue that like the Oklahoma City bombings and. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. But I mean, out, like outside. Outside, like, like not a, what do you call it? A self terrorism. Like domestic, domestic, yeah. Uh, even that, like, I can't confirm the validity. You know, like I don't know. I, I, th- I've heard this in like every um, every time I've read about like September 11th. That was like the first time we got. I mean, unless you count maybe like the Revolutionary War, where we're technically. I don't know if you could claim the sure, letter <laughs> or, like, I'm certain like. Cold War tensions probably led to some shit, and even I, yeah, I, I don't know. Just because they say it was the first, I I don't I don't mean to sound uh edgy as far as like oh I don't give a fuck about your pain about September 11 or some shit. It's just like it, I I couldn't understand how co- coming from a foreign country that's been bombed a shitload of times. It's just like. This is what happens. There's much worse shit that happens when you fuck with people, you know? Sure. So, I don't know. Fair enough. An interesting perspective. Yeah, I, I, I didn't mean to sound like I'm beefing up a really fucked up, but, you know, no, you I, bitches I, crying. No, it, right. it's just like sort of... And even, I, I mean... No, 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 I'm not kidding. No, 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 no go ahead. No, go, I was going to say like this shit now where people have this phobia of what the fuck is going to happen with Russia and and you know world war now like i i i don't know as i i i don't think it would be that big of a deal getting taken over i really don't i, I like like when you think about 
I think I think being a country getting taken over it maybe like kills pride and your idea of control and patriotism. But as far as you know, I mean, think about your goals in life. You know, I want to have a happy family, a steady job, maybe be able to travel. And I think to myself, if like say commun like like I don't know necessarily communism, say any country took over, would I not be able to do those things? Would I not be able to be happy? I I kind of doubt that. I think I could find happiness and goodness in any situation. Sure, but that's like painting like a very nice like coat of paint on like hostile military takeovers. Which yeah, I think, yeah, you know, yeah, like. You know, like, it's, like, cool, like, super inspirational, like, it doesn't matter, like, who's in charge or, you know, yeah. if if we're invaded and... I mean, that's that's the same reason why I, f- why I don't give a fuck about voting, you know? It's like, who gives a fuck who's in charge? What changed since I was a kid to now? I feel the same as far as, like, what, taxes, uh, who's running the country? I mean... I, you know, and, and this goes for us, too. I don't think, I think 90% of the people who talk about politics don't know what the fuck these people are a part of. And, and I'm part of that. I don't know yeah, anything yeah, yeah, about politics. Yeah, yeah, same here. Yeah, politics. exactly. I, you know, I just, I can say with the utmost confidence that, like, I think we've got a pretty solid thing going in America. Yeah, yeah. And sure no, it has it, its flaws. No, it, no, it couldn't be know? fucking better now. This is the best but, time to be alive. Are you kidding me? Like, But, I don't know, like... If I were to find myself in like a government or living in a country ruled by a government where it's like, oh, you don't agree with me, I'm going to kill you, or I'm yeah. going to send you to a forced labor camp. You don't. You don't or, think you would be able to adapt? No, absolutely not. Without like sacrificing my sense of self, no. Like, you know, yeah. Y- you hear horror stories about like the KGB and. And yeah. Stalin and yeah. Putin and would you go out in a blaze? Uh, no, probably not. I would. <laughs> that, but no, you'd be happy anywhere. You wouldn't go out in a blaze. You'd you'd be. Content. I'd be happy. I'd be happy going out in the blaze. <laughs> I don't know. But may that day never come. Yeah. Long live our democratic overlord. Yeah. An- another thing, side said. I, I know we're, yeah. we were getting gruesome. Wait, I want to go back to Kevin Spacey. I feel like you. Oh, you're talking about Kevin Spacey is different than Bill Cosby, or I forget the other example. Yeah. That let's finish that thought. And then what what was the question? That you, I feel like you never finished that thought. Well, and then no. You went okay, to so Wendy Kevin Spacey C. was one fucking guy, <laughs> one mistake, which I, like you said, that homosexual rage. You can s- empathize and sympathize with, you know, and he, you heard what, ha- I mean, what, he fucked around with a 14 year old boy and wanted to fuck him way back when? Mm. That's what it was. I I don't know the details. That that Yeah, that was it. He was on set somewhere and I don't even think it was like he kind of like pushed towards, hey, do you want to fuck and, and kind of like pushed him towards sure. the bed or something. I don't, I don't know if it was like anything extreme. And they were like, you know, well, a, a lot of the defense for him was, well, he, you know, he thought the boy was gay and, and, and this is normal in the homosexual community. This is what happens, <laughs> you know, like. And how did that defense go? Well, I mean, you don't hear people talking shit about Kevin Spacey anywhere. I don't. Well, I mean. As, as much as compared to like anything done like for like against a woman. I or or heterosexual, I should say. I think he's probably never going to work again. I think he's probably, you know, he's already been taken off like yeah. all of his shit. And they had to like but, but, refilm shit. And no, but at, but at the same time, would you, would would you hate somebody like that for one fucking mistake that long ago? I I I would not. T- I don't think that should ruin his career. Well, especially I, if you're coming from that understanding defense. But I'm just I'm just saying that. People today take shit to the extreme where somebody like John Wayne Gacy could be like, I mean, I understand why, but somebody who killed fucking 30 fucking people, you you don't put that as a defense for like a gay community. I'm not saying they did, but I could see somebody who's extreme and blind doing that. Sure. Well, I mean, Gacy got the death sentence yeah. and he was executed. So you, that's- you know, it was interesting on that uh, true crime, what hmm. they said, that is... Uh, 
you know they ask you your last meal mm-hmm. <laughs> it was something so fucking ridiculous i'm just like yeah that'd be bill if he's on his right because he, he was like i want a dozen five inch jumbo fried shrimp 20 popeyes extra crispy like yeah yeah uh chicken wings and then then he uh, had like caviar. one bite of it right yeah yeah, yeah he yeah. had he had like one fucking strip from like a bar uh a garden that was in the prison that had chicken yeah like, you know yeah. it's so ridiculous yeah well i don't think they do that anymore i think they've really like you don't get whatever you want anymore yeah i think they used to i think that then you know assholes are like i want this 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 and this dude i believe in the case of something like pedophilia they should use an eye for an eye justice thing because the whole time I'm listening to this, they have they have all these like interviews of of uh, victims' parents and things, and they keep talking about it. So, you know, obviously back then you can't be running your fucking mouth off on the news, but they were saying, "I am seeking justice. He has killed my baby, and I want everything. I want them to do everything they can so that they put that bastard into justice." And they keep using that word justice. Like, to me, in that case, like, okay, so these were young kids who were terrified, who were raped of their innocence, who were mind fucked, and I think he should be he should be put into like you know the you know the guys that fucking waterboard people in mm-hmm. Iraq. He should be slowly executed by being waterboarded, maybe slowly slitting some fucking you know. ACL knee ligaments with a razor, just like ultimate torture. See, but so, then we're no better than they are. Well, that that would be eye for an eye justice. But that's not our system. Yeah, yeah, you it's know, true. An eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind. Yeah. Well, there is a third eye. That's right. So I'm, I'm a hippie. So there, <laughs> yeah, that that one, <laughs> right. that one's people to be this tortured. One, the, 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 this one aspect, I'm a hippie in this one defense. <laughs> sure. Right. Um, no, I mean. No, I, I, I was, because uh, you said that, I mean, did, does that answer the question about the Kevin Spacey thing, or so I don't know what you're going to y- say. you mentioned Bill Cosby, and so your point is that. I shouldn't have mentioned Bill Cosby, because that's like a fucking multiple offender. Sure. Um, so I don't, I'm, I'm sure, I, I don't know what happened to Kevin Spacey. I don't follow any of this. I just yeah, have yeah. to, like, take everything with, I, with I a do, grain honestly, of salt. I honestly, he was uh, one of my favorite actors, and still is. I loved everything he was in. Uh, are you uh are you, or no you're engaged but you know it's probably lonely uh, yeah that is true write him a fan letter i should send some pics so i'm gonna shift gears a little bit well, and it's actually not gonna be that rough of a transition but well i was gonna say uh oh you want to hear another funny thing i heard i like laughed on true crime no no, no i don't no. okay man we can't sorry. just sit here and talk about other podcasts okay 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 like, I'm sorry you know like yeah. we can make our own content we have enough going on okay up here between you and i man All right and plus I, it just it strikes me as kind of cheap like yeah yeah you yeah. know what i heard on this podcast like yeah you know no, i agree translation of a translation yeah um and I don't mean to silence you and stifle you, but no, I, like, I, I'm I, thinking about our fans out yeah, there. And, yeah. um, or maybe that could be our new angle. Like we listen to podcasts and <laughs> try, try <laughs> yeah, to yeah. remember. You like, guys are uh, shit. Right? Yeah. Fact you, checking. Yeah. Fuck you. Fuck. I got, a, jo- I, I got a job for Gil Rasmussen. <laughs> is, that, is that Gil? That's Gil Rasmussen. Oh, that's a good name. It's the most fucking Nazi name ever. <laughs> Oh, is that the the YouTube guy? Yeah. Oh, I thought that you were saying that was Gibby's full name. No, no, no. Um, That's not Gibby. But so when we were driving to Phil's, you know, the studio. Yeah. And uh, there was kind of a lull in the conversation. Or no, I was telling about my birthday and Gavin got bored and he was like, Phil, tell tell Bill about the campfire. So I'd I'd like you to talk about the talk campfire. Talk about this story. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and do you see how, like, Kevin Spacey is kind of a nice transition? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So tell tell our viewers about Except this is, uh, I don't know how old he was, but I'm 31, and this was concerning uh, some <laughs> 10-year-olds. <laughs> a lot of 10-year-olds. Yeah. So set the stage, Phil. Take it away. Well, um, I, I, you know, it's been getting colder, and I love, I mean, I, I've, I love the fucking woods. I don't know if it's like in my some genetical thing or some past life thing. 
I love the fucking woods. Maybe it's got some black metal influence, but I remember, I actually remember being a kid and one of my favorite things was when we got snowed in where you couldn't walk anywhere. Mm. I would listen to Burzum, Varg's band, <laughs> and just walk for miles through woods. It was fucking beautiful. I love that sense of isolation. And um I uh I was I, I figured I want to take him to, you know, roast some hot dogs, maybe get some marshmallows and s'mores in for the sure. woods. I I live out in the burbs, so there's a shitload of wood paths everywhere and nobody you know that's the thing that fucking sucks is like when mm. you're in Chicago, you can start a fire in a fucking alley. And it, I mean I mean it's just I feel like the way they trim out woods in the suburbs, they make them so that it's impossible to start a fire. Okay. I'm not kidding because, like me and John, you could ask John, uh, say nothing. We grew up 25 years together and we always had fucking forest fires. Always. We burned down a forest fire, but we're not going to say which one. No, my friend did it. Not not right, John, yeah. somebody else. A friend yeah. of a friend. Yeah, that's right. But, um, so... So you want we, Gavin to experience yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. So we went on this bike trail that's not far off from wh- where I am. Who is we? You? Uh, well, me and well, one me and Gavin went on a bike ride there. Um, okay. Before this current story that I'm talking about, because okay. uh, he got a new bike, and I was just wanted to see like if he can try it out because Gavin's a small guy and yeah. he's transitioning from like a toddler bike to a BMX bike, and um, he's pretty wobbly, but whatever. Anyway, um. So I'm like, yeah, you, let's go to let's go to the woods and let's, you know that that we found one place. There's like one little fucking opening, where there, you know, you have to have like an like a circular opening where you can have the pit in the middle so that it doesn't set the trees on fire, above, and you know it, it's a good place for a campfire. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, you want to go? And he's like, ah, yeah, this will be awesome. Oh my god, wh- when are we going? And I'm like, well. Let me get changed. Let me get some, you know, I'm going to put some, uh, you know, uh, you, you know, get yeah, all the dressing all black. Yeah. 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 Get, get, get some rope and tape <laughs> and, and a rag soaked in ether. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so. See, and our fans don't know some, where the story is going. Get, get some quotes from Kevin Spacey. That's right. No. Uh, so I, no, I was getting all the food ready and, um, I didn't know where he, I, I told him, I'm like, be back here in a half hour and we'll go. This whole fucking time, he's asking every friend in the neighborhood to come with, and I, I and I didn't know like, it it's so fucking goofy. Like when we were on the road, it 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 looked like a clip from Stranger Things, because there's you know one monster, me, this caveman fuck, and then like five you know preteen boys behind me, this army, you know, <laughs> there, no, I, there was a to- total of I think six or seven guy boys. And we go down this, uh, you know, we go to these, we go to the secret fucking area in the yeah, woods. Yeah, where no one can see yeah, you. Yeah, it was, it was, it was the one opening that, um, and there was like shit was trimmed down. Like you could tell, like bums slept there, so mm-hmm. it was a nice place to have a campfire. And we went there, and yeah, we're just, uh, you know, I had the the previous owners <laughs> still have their fucking credit card checked in to get newspapers delivered here so okay. we just have a shitload of sh- like paper to burn yeah cuz i don't read the newspaper but um so yeah we we had a fire we had um yeah no we had, we had a lot of fun they they kept so the thing that made bill laugh is that they kept throwing garbage in the fire and I'm just like no don't do this and he's like no there's more garbage here look at this what happens when you burn this and I'm the kind of guy that, you know, I had to learn everything from my mistakes. I'm like, all right, throw it in there. See what happens. You know, see what happens. Yeah. And then I thought, to my, as I just kept throwing them in there, I'm like, fuck, you know what? You're cooking over that fire. Th- this is, no, no. I thought like, this is what I used to do when I was a kid. They, yeah. they let them do it. And they were just burning garbage the whole time. And then like after they burned maybe, you know, like half a garbage can's worth of garbage, I'm thinking, fuck. Fuck! What are they going to tell their parents that they did today? You know, <laughs> they're coming home smelling yeah. like burnt trash. Yeah. Well, like I said, one of them they they threw a uh, shitty Budweiser like brown bottle and it popped and hit him in the face. <laughs> and, and then Gavin uh, wasn't Gavin, and the, the uh, one of the other kids got hit in the arm with uh, I put a Starbucks bottle in there, the ca- cappuccino ones, and the cap hit him because it popped off. <laughs> Luckily, it wasn't hot, so no no marks left. You know, 
<laughs> so just taking but, all the boys out to the woods to yeah, yeah. fucking get burned and abused and shit. Yeah, no, it it was it was fun. I mean, did you, you never did that when you were a kid. What, what, go with a older man into the woods. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I I figured it's like uh, you know, yeah. Pe- people work so much these days. It's like a fucking, I guess you could call a part time camping trip. You know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was fun. Yeah, we used to have fires in the wood. Um, so Gavin has friends. Are there some that you like and some that you don't like? Do you know their names? Like, yeah, yeah. Do they call you Mister Phil? Do they call you? They just call me Gavin's dad. Okay. They, they don't. I, I think they don't really call me that. Like, yeah. talk to me. Or, yeah. But uh, so, do you have like favorites? You're like, oh, that's a really cool kid. Let's hang out with him. Or it's like, oh, great, this guy's coming. Whiny uh, McGee. Yeah. Th- the the one th- there's this uh Arshis. he's like a smaller indian kid okay i fucking love him nice cuz he like sometimes they they'll bully him and he's just like always happy or has a comeback or he'll stand mm. up for himself or he'll laugh and like even when they like knock him down he just he's always laughing and jolly and like but he play but he's tough too he doesn't you know it's not like they're just picking on him he's 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 i don't know he's he's a good happy kid and then, uh, God, I wish I could just trade with Gavin. <laughs> no, no, get, um, and then there's, uh, Peter, who's the spoiled Polish kid. Yeah. Who's Wait, kinda, is it spelled like P-I-O-R-P-I-O-T-R? Piotr, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I don't know. I don't know how you spell it. I haven't looked up their information. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> no, but, uh. But no, you know where he lives. He's, he's really fucking bratty, uh, which I know a lot of Polish kids are. He's, he kind of like questions everything. I don't know. Like but how? Like, you know, uh, I tell Gavin, like, you know, you should take your shoes off. You should uh, always tie your shoes, you cl- clean them off, or, or you mm-hmm. know, you uh, you need to be back by 8.30. Why do you have to be back by 8.30? Did you? <laughs> He's like, I'm grounded. What are you grounded for? It's, that's how he talks all uh. the time. Wait, you get grounded? I've never been grounded. He's that type of kid. And do you hit him when he comes over? Are you? <sighs> no, I wish I could I, ca- I, I I like to indirectly set the cats on a prowl <laughs> after him, you know. <laughs> s- s- you know. Yeah, they're pretty vicious. Some catnip in his back pocket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, take that, you you spoiled prissy. Yeah. <laughs> Peter. And then there's a. Uh, let me think. Who else? Who else? Went? There's uh, Daniel, who is the Christian one. Yeah, he's a fucking pussy. <laughs> such a little bitch. Such what a, this, makes this, you say that? How they're like ten, eleven, right? They're yeah, but he, his ma, like, you know, the ma I said like she's trying to get like Gavin baptized in communion. Yeah, like she refused. She like completely. You are not allowed to go trick or treating because it's scary. <laughs> it's scary. <laughs> yeah. So now, the, no, of course, there's nothing the ki- scary about free candy. Yeah. What the fuck are you? Especially in the suburbs, and like, dude. I, I, is there even such thing as missing kids in 2018? There's fucking GPS everywhere. And uh, anyways, yeah, my phone. I got an Amber Alert like last week at work. It freaked me out. Yeah. Um, did you get the presidential alert? Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, dude, my phone. Wrong button. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my phone's more well connected than I am. Yeah. Which well, I guess the, what, what, makes what, what, sense. what else was there? Uh, well, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. He just like I, I don't know. He just. He's a fr- and then uh, like he won't. Uh, we try and watch a horror movie, and he's like, "No, Daniel can't come." Over. He he doesn't like scary movies. I d- I don't know, man. I think about like the shit that like me and my friends used to compete with. Like, what's mm. the scariest, hardest, most painful? <laughs> you know, I mean, isn't that what you guts. do? Is yeah. Who's got the most guts? So I thought you meant like who's got the balls to kick in a deer's guts uh, no. like they find in <laughs> no, the that, that Chuck Palina <coughs> story that we were oh, talking oh, about. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. That's what I mean. Like, who's the hardest? Who's <laughs> the baddest? Yeah. No, I mean, I don't know. So you love them all, like your own children. Gavin yeah, no, is they're, popular. They're good kids, yeah. Does he hang out with Somebody the ladies? Else, does he hang out with ladies? Yeah. No, he says he likes some girls, but like. Wait, like, like, like? like? Like, like, like. Oh, man. But he doesn't, uh, I, d- I, don't, I don't think he's got any drive yet. His voice is too high yet. Sure. <laughs> His balls haven't dropped. Right. Give it time. Yeah. He'll figure it out. So I want to, 
I want to tell tell you about uh, work. Tell about me. some goofy shit at my work. Perfect. So I, I've told people that I work at a welding place. We yeah. make uh, animal cages, yeah. right? And and surgical tables. Yeah, yeah, and surgical tables. And you know what's ridiculous is that, um, dude, I fucking hate the way shit is run at my work because the thing is, everybody there is old money, old school. Mm -hmm. Meaning by that, I mean, they've been there for fucking 40 years. Mm -hmm. So I have to work slow for them to be able to have a job there. Right. Like literally there's, there's, there's workers that will be hired for a position under somebody. Mm -hmm. And if that person who is above them sees them working too hard, you're fired because you make me look bad. (laughs) I'm not kidding. Sure. That shit happens all. Sensible. It's fucking bullshit. And so uh, a lot of people. When there's no work to do, they go in the fucking bathroom and just fall asleep on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing about this is, I, I mean, I mean, there's just car- bad karma going from every direction. The owners are mad that there's people doing this. They don't know how to regulate it, but they don't want to go in the bathroom because the bathroom is so fucked right. that they don't want to go in that bathroom. And you don't want to wake anyone up. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's that'd be... That would not be cool. Super rude. Yeah. And so, I mean, but the other funny thing is that- Wait, what's wrong with the bathroom? Dude, I mean, it's like a bathroom in train spotting. (laughs) You know, some England or Scottish bar, you know? it's Dude, it smells like a rotting carcass of beaver. Like, the, 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 we have a trough- Wait, specifically beaver? Of, Uh, of rat, of fucking uh, Chicago rat. Those banana peels you slip on the yeah. spine, you know? It's fucking so bad. And it's because our sink is, uh, you know, like those troughs they have at baseball games to piss in? Mm-hmm. That's our sink. There's there's like a sprinkler that comes out. You, you yeah. press this pedal down, mm-hmm. and it's been clogged since I've worked there. Oh, Jesus. So there's <laughs> you could see like flies skipping on it like it's a pond. Ugh. It's fucking rotting water, and they never want to like... As soon as someone makes one complaint, then they finally like use a plunger on it, but they don't give a fuck. The the toilets, I mean, the toilets are always where you flush. They're always spraying with water, literally like a sprinkler. So when you take a shit, you're going to like people know, "Oh, yeah, you took a shit today, huh?" cuz it looks like you got sprayed with a hose down your back. <laughs> so I mean, I wish I could put my ass higher so it'd be kind of like a duvet. Right. Ooh. You know, t- oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, they're... they're a but bidet. So, yeah, oh, bidet. A bidet is the butt thing. I think, a du- div- I think a duvet is like something for your bed. Oh, okay. Well, uh, anyways... The they don't want to fix it. They don't. And the funny thing is they're trying to figure out how to regulate when people go there and how long they're mm. there. And the, the other funny thing that the people who are doing this sleeping... There's a motion. They want to. The, there's the the bosses are so cheap that they the motion sensor is only on for like five minutes. So every five minutes, whoever's sleeping has to like wave their hand <laughs> so the lights go back on. You know. Wait. So, oh. So would, could, would you want the lights to go off though? If you're taking well, if a nap? They, well, if they go off, then that means you're sleeping because you haven't mm. moved. So they have to regu- You know. Oh God. Activate and, and then so here's my long ridiculous fucking story. I work Monday through Thursday, mm-hmm. twelve hour days, uh, and I'm just looking at time. And so we, we're, yeah, twelve hour days, and uh, th- uh, Monday through Thursday. So Wednesday, I my mom gave me this Starbucks card she didn't want, so mm-hmm. I was like getting all the fucking goodies there, and I go. It's like the Baha'i Temple all over again. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so so I I go and get like usually a cookie and a coffee yeah and they gave me like for some reason there's like three workers rushing at the because i came there like during lunch Mm -hmm. they gave me like two extra cookies because they kept giving me that i'm like all right i'll take this yeah i didn't get my cookie yet all right i'll take (laughs) this yeah i didn't get my cookie yet and i had these fucking cookies and i left them on like my welding bench Mm -hmm. and i come uh, you know, Thursday is my last day. So I took Thursday off because I had a stomach flu. I come back Monday and all my shit is fucking ripped apart and gone. Just all over. Like, and I go to my boss. I'm like, you know, did you, do people just fucking work here 
and take people's food. And the other reason why I was mad was, so when you when you get a stack of like say cage doors to weld, mm-hmm. there will be a stack of like two hundred, and you and you have them all set, and you have to like take one down, put it down, and then re- make a new stack of the mm-hmm. welding, right? When I get these stacks, there's always like a fucking petrified half donut in these stacks. <laughs> So I keep thinking, like, are you fucking kidding me? There's just fat asses here yeah. working overtime on Friday or something, and they and they just eat our shit and uh, I'll leave this in this pile. Yeah, you know, I guess I I found a donut, I found a petrified fig Newton, I found like half a sandwich, yeah. you know. And he's like, oh, it was probably squirrel, <laughs> and he just smirked and like laughed. I'm like, you fucking douchebag, like you ate it. Yeah. With that fucking smirk, you know? Yeah, your shit eating grin. Yeah. So I I I'm I'm like, what the I'm so pissed off all day. I'm talking to everybody like a fucking alcoholic. I'm just so fucking mad. I Wait, nev- how do alcoholics talk? No, I'm just like, yeah, what the fuck is next? No, let me I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. Leave me alone. <laughs> you know, just Yeah, just, that is how I talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, I'm just so pi- and then he, and then he tells me w- w- we are going to have meeting at the end of day at the end of day and you know we had this huge meeting everybody they're they're talking about that there was a theft in the company and they didn't you know obviously they never want to specify what it was because mm-hmm. for whatever reasons but you know they're like well if this whole time I keep thinking it's about people's food yeah like your cookies yeah yeah I'm like yeah somebody did <laughs> I'm glad it was reported <laughs> fucking assholes you know. <laughs> And 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 I guess it was something way more. It was like um, it was some like remote control sensor for like a really high tech cage. Like uh, so, some of the cages they have a uh, like temperature control. Mm-hmm. So it was something like actually expensive. Yeah. That got shipped in, and the person just ripped open the box, fucking you know, bagged it, and then like sold it online or something. Yeah. So she's like, if you just put listen, something was taken, and if you just leave it here at the end of the day, or even tomorrow morning. We will forget about it. We won't do this, and don't do it anymore. You are you are fucking up people's reviews, and we can't give raises when things like this are stolen. And I'm just like, yeah, who's leaving those cookies? Who's yeah, the, you know. Yeah, come on. And the whole time, I'll be honest, because I'm a clueless, fucking privileged white guy. So this is what goes through a fucking idiot's white guy's mind. First thing I'm thinking is like, fuck. I hope they don't blame it on the black guy. Sure. You know, yeah. just for the fuck of it. I hope they don't, because that's going to be so fucked up. Coincidentally, he's also the fattest fuck on the floor. Sure. So I'm like, he totally took yeah, the cookies. Yeah, he took the cookies. But that's I him. But I can't say it. You know? Right. So so this whole time I'm thinking it's about the cookies and the fat fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Concluding story, nobody knows what happened to this shit as of to now the remote the, the, yeah to the to remote the road or your cookies to, to the remote to the expensive shit nobody st- still nobody it wasn't like turned in nobody fucking knows as far as the cookies they found it on a saw on a fucking table <laughs> saw with little nibbles in it <laughs> oh. and and they were piss- like that day that i was gone the when i was sick they mm-hmm. they failed to mention this to me and let me be in alcoholic piss mode you know that they the bosses were mad. They had to fucking pay three guys for like four hours chasing a fucking squirrel <laughs> around around the which is so ridiculous because yeah. we fucking make cages. You know? <laughs> that's that's like somebody fucking robbing a gun factory. We only know how to make them. We don't know how to use them. You know? Like Oh my god. So yeah, it, it was squirrels. <laughs> Yeah, it was squirrels. Oh, that's fantastic. So, uh, yeah, and they found my cookie. I, I could not eat it. It was covered in aluminum shards. Ah. And uh, Probably would have added a fun and, texture. And you, know, you know the weirdest fucking thing is that, mm. um, uh, have you ever heard, of, like, I've heard this before that actually, you know, because, like, Americans are kind of known to be hostile and... And uh, handsome uh, and... Uh, and well, well, no, well, no, I've heard this that in ca- Canada, squirrels are so comfortable with humans that they will run up to you and you can feed them out of your hand. Okay. And in America, like, kids are always, like, shooting them or throwing rocks at them and shit. At, yeah. le- at least I knew growing up. Sure. And the weird thing is around this factory, like, all the squirrels are so fucking comfortable <laughs> with people. I was, like, uh, there's this tree I sit under during lunch outside to get yeah. fresh air. And I was sitting there one day and there were, there were two squirrels running and it, I was just laughing because it reminded me of my cats. Yeah. 
because one of them like bit the other in the neck and then mm. it's running away and i'm watching them and the one squirrel is like oh he won't get me he doesn't have the balls to do this and he they keep running towards me and i'm like i wonder what they're gonna do he jumps up my leg first tries to crawl up my pant leg like mm. like, like in my like fucking, inside yeah then he runs up my leg then he runs up my shoulder and then i don't feel anything because I, I see the other squirrel running, and I'm just like, oh, yeah. whatever. And I keep eating my sandwich. As soon as I tilt my head, he, like, dives, like, bounces off my forehead. Because he was on my shoulder the whole time. <laughs> so, there, yeah. That's wild. I don't know. We we need a guy in a tower with a BB gun over there. Yeah, you know? right? Or, yeah, get get some get your pack of 10-year-olds to yeah. go over there and abuse them. Yeah. yeah. We were just burning squirrels in the fire. I think I'm ready to take a break. Yeah. And I'm just saying that cuz I really got to pee. Think we're probably are we wrapping it up? Yeah, let's let's wrap yeah, it up. Yeah, we could wrap it up. So guys, shoot your squirrels, burn more garbage. Yep. Mhm. Uh What other messages do uh, we have? Quality time with kids, convert shoot, to Baha'i, shoot more people with while smoking weed. Yep. Cuz it's right. legal. Yeah. This is America. That's exactly right. Just don't hide uh, that gun. Don't conceal it. Don't carry it. Just own it and uh you know, just and brandish it proudly. And absolutely, check out True Crime. Check out Gibby. Yeah. Gibby's the man. We love, we love him. Gibby. Check him out. Okay, I don't like. I don't even care about a collab or or even like. Honestly, it's a good fucking show. Yeah, there you go. And speaking of awesome shows, you can catch us on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, Podbean, Bur- Blueberry. Yeah, uh, just uh, follow your heart, everything. and it'll lead you to us. Yeah, we actually have a for this episode. We're actually sponsored by Pam. That's right, Pam. Is, uh, uh, supposedly biohazard, uh, pro-choice. Uh, it's it's. Uh, I, I guess it's ham made out of uh, fetal remains. It's, mm. Yeah, I mean, they, sounds like breakfast to me. I mean, the stem cells are good, so that, they and they, may, and they taste even better. That's right. So go research this stem cell product. Yeah, and uh, we will. Yeah, we have a commercial for it that we're sponsored by them. So yeah, uh, perfect. That's it, right? Yeah. Thanks for listening. Have a great night. We'll catch you next time. In America, this is what dreams come true. You can do many things. Like open your own business. Like open your own business. And facing your own fears. Oh, facing your own fears. How about being a s- uh, how about being a, se- a secret agent, a super s- se- secret agent? How about being a secret agent, a super s- secret agent? Oh yeah! Have you ever thought about fucking something playing? I I have. You ever thought about when the last time I, I lost my ball? Have you ever thought about the last time I lost my ball? Have you ever thought about the last time I lost my ball? Thinking about something you get in bed. Uh. Thinking about something you invented. You know what I'm saying? Think about it. All those things, but not me. That's why I eat Pam. Pam is made of 100% hot waste, and the and the worst is constantly kind. Yeah.